Welcome back. I have Dr. Michael Bain here with Hogue Hospital who's going to talk to us a little bit about two different things. First of all, we're going to learn a little bit about him, uh, which he is the medical director for the Hogue Wound Healing and Hyperbaric Medicine. And then we also will be learning a little bit about plastic and reconstructive surgery. Welcome. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Okay, so I know you have two titles. So why don't you, in a nutshell, give us an idea of what you do? Well, um, I'm the chair of plastic surgery at Hogue Hospital, and I'm the medical director of the uh, Outpatient Wound and Hyperbaric Medicine Center. Okay. So um, I uh, essentially run our wound center as the medical director. Uh, we have two sites, one in uh, Irvine, one in Newport Beach. Okay. And we're a very high volume uh, wound center. We do really think of us as an uh, amputation prevention center and wound center. Okay. Um, okay. So I, I'm busy. <laughs> you are, and we were talking a little bit before uh, the interview here. Uh, you know, you had when you first started, you weren't really sure that you were going to go into this particular type of field. So tell me just a little bit about how that happened. Uh, well, uh, as a plastic surgeon, you know, plastic surgeons do everything from birth defects to cosmetic surgery uh, to reconstructive surgery to breast surgery or mm -hmm. burns, and so and hand surgery actually. And so you have your choice of where you end up. And I think everyone wants to do hand surgery or other hand. Cosmetic <laughs> surgery. I initially went to plastics to do hand. Okay. Um, decided I wanted to do cosmetic. It was at the end of my training. And the chairman of plastic surgery, it was a Sunday morning, and it was the middle of winter in Pennsylvania. And they had to drive there in the snow. It was awful outside. <laughs> and um, I asked him why on earth he was doing it, because he was my father's age and could have retired. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Akunsky said to me, he's like, Michael, one day, someone's going to call you and ask for help. And either you're going to say you're a cosmetic surgeon and you don't do it, mm -hmm. or you're going to remember why you went to medical school and you're going right. to help the patient. Mm -hmm. And I got that phone call the first week in practice, and I said, I'm happy to help. Mm -hmm. And it was downhill from there, so to speak. <laughs> and I just got busier and busier because I'm always willing to help. Right, right. So now I take care of uh, those people who potentially have a wound that won't heal or have diabetes with a foot injury or okay. a foot ulcer that won't heal, and we stop them from getting their amputations. Oh my gosh. And, and that's, our, that's really our, our goal is an amputation prevention center, okay. helping people heal. So give me an example of a wound that regularly occurs. Well, I think one of the most common, like traumatic wounds would be someone kicking their dishwasher or running into a car door. Any, either of those two are very common, mm -hmm. and then they don't heal. Because okay. sometimes people have barriers to healing, whether it's um, arterial problems, not enough blood going down to the toes, mm -hmm. or vein problems, which the, the, the venous blood pools in the leg because the backflow valves are bad, mm. and that slows wound healing, or, or di diabetes itself, right. which causes a destruction of mu small blood vessels in the leg, okay. um, for instance. Um, all, any of those things are uh, things that we have okay. that we see. Okay. Uh, in terms of therapy. Now we talk a little bit about hyperbaric oxygen therapy and of course sure. I immediately think of a hyperbaric chamber where we're laying in it and that kind of thing. Is it the same kind it of thing? It actually is. Our chambers are bigger, big enough for you and I to sit and play cards in <laughs> but I'm too tall and I'd be sitting like this. Um, they can hold up to a 700 pound patient. Wow. Um, uh, they're essentially the top of the line chambers because we're the hospital mm -hmm. and so our Hogue Irvine and Hogue Newport Beach each have three chambers. Mm -hmm. We use those for a variety of, of medical reasons, um, especially in patients who have diabetes with um, ulcers that can't heal, that have had infections, um, that helps people heal. We use it for people who've had radiation, for instance, for oh. prostate cancer oh, okay. or other problems who have um, bladder problems from it or non-healing wounds from, they had skin cancer, for instance, and radiated mm -hmm. and the wound never healed. We can, okay. we can use it for that as well. And what exactly is it doing? It increases the amount of oxygen in the plasma okay. to allow people to heal because the red blood cells are already 98% saturated. The mm -hmm. plasma is 3% saturated. Mm -hmm. So it actually increases the blood supply in the tissue itself through the plasma. So why would somebody use a hyperbaric chamber if they didn't have a wound? What would be the benefits for them? Uh, that's an interesting question. The, in general, like a healthy person wouldn't use it. Okay. There's, there's really no indication. I know that athletes use it um, for recovery, but mm -hmm. um, that's not on label use. Okay. Um, it's really not indicated and it doesn't really do that much. Okay. Um, it's a very low risk thing being in a hyperbaric chamber mm -hmm. and, and you sit in there essentially and watch TV the whole time or take a nap. <laughs> 
<laughs> for about 90 minutes. It's actually great. You get it's peace and quiet. It's probably very relaxing, yeah. Yeah, you get to catch up on movies or sleep. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Hogue's program, uh, their nationally acclaimed program, and, and how that works. So the Hogue program, we're, we're a nationally acclaimed program. We're in the top 25% of wound centers across the country. Okay. Our healing rates are six days faster wow. um, than the national average. We're very, um, I use the term aggressive, uh, as f not in a bad way but we're very aggressive in our approach to the patients. Mm -hmm. When one in four patients goes to amputation in the United States without an arterial evaluation, mm. which I think is, is obviously poor medicine, so uh, patients who their doctor says, well, we need to cut your leg or your toe or your foot off, um, we don't like that. And right. so we treat that, we find those problems, those barriers to healing, mm -hmm. and we work very aggressively to get that fixed. Well, I'm sure the patients are very happy about that. They I are. I mean, my goodness, you don't want to have lose a toe or anything like that to without some sort of proper evaluation, like you said. That's All right. right. Excellent. Um, what are some of the treatment options and ongoing support? Um, I know you've talked about some of them, but are there some other things that are going on, like growth and some other factors? Well, so we have a, a lot of things available to us because we are part of the hospital. Mm -hmm. And so um, our nursing staff, for instance, they're all sub-ICU nurses or physical therapists primarily. Um, and we have grafts that come out of a box. They're, they're um, different, all different types. Some, some of them are from placenta mm. um, that is cleaned and, and processed to be able to put on a wound to help it heal faster, bringing stem cells oh, wow. and growth factors. We have other grafts that are um, skin cells that have been grown in culture with stem cells mm -hmm. to be able to put on it. And those are tissue grafts that we have okay. um, that are really work incredibly well mm. and um, covered by insurance. And we use those to help people heal faster. It's just amazing technology. It, it really is. There's a lot of new technology out there and we try to stay on the forefront of it. Okay. And um, especially me, I, I try to keep us at the edge of, of, of the, the, the far and away the best technology right. possible to help our patients. Anything interesting coming down the pike that you, you kind of see but not quite here yet? You know, it's interesting. We're, we, we're involved in studies um, at um, at Hogue, do it for wound care. Okay. Um, and we're looking at different studies using stem cells from fat and different things for different mm. types of problems. Um, we've been done a study uh, with uh, pig collagen grafts and to, uh, wow. embedded with an antiseptic to help people heal quicker, okay. um, as well as microbiology studies as well. That's great. So wow. we try to do our part with research. Very good. That's excellent. Well, thank you so much. And then if anyone would like any additional information, they can always go to your hogue.org slash wound care. That's right. All right. Great. Thank you. It was very nice to meet you. Thank you. All right. And again, if you guys want any additional information, uh, go ahead and go to hogue.org forward slash wound care. We'll be right back after this. Thank you. That was great. Did I forget?